Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Digital Inclusion Symposium. The symposium is organized by the Institute of Policy Studies and the Infocom Media Development Authority. It is held in conjunction with the IMDA's Digital Inclusion Festival. I am Natzira from IPS and I will be your MC today. Today we will be looking at topics relating to digital inclusion and readiness. What is universal design? What does digital inclusion look like? How do we build a digitally ready society? Just a few announcements before we begin. Please ensure that your phone is on silent mode. In our efforts to go green, the conference kit can be viewed via the QR code behind me. We will have the pleasure of hearing from local and overseas speakers who are experts in their fields. We encourage you to participate in conversations with them by sharing your comments and questions via pigeonhole. Lastly, this symposium is open to media coverage and will be recorded and shared on our social media. Please use the hashtag DI Festival and digital inclusion in your social media posts. We welcome Mr. S. Iswaran, Minister for Communications and Information. May I now invite Mr. Iswaran to give his opening remarks. Excellency Dr. Beg Visit, distinguished guests, industry partners, uh, many familiar faces in the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. And first, uh, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this Digital Inclusion Festival. I think all of us are here because we recognize that technology plays a very important part in our lives today, especially. It has empowered us to do a lot more, to save time and also given us greater convenience. And indeed, you can say that the access to technology is a key determinant of our quality of our lives today. At the same time, we also recognize that there are segments of our population in our community who may not be able to fully enjoy the benefits brought about by technology, either because they are not familiar with it or because their access to this technology is limited. So it falls upon all of us as a community to make sure that every Singaporean is able to enjoy the benefits brought about by technology and to help everyone to be digitally ready, especially our seniors and persons with disabilities. This explains why we have organized this festival, a three-day event that brings together everyone to embrace technology. And it's an important complement and aspect of our overall national effort in terms of digitalization. We often talk about digital economy. We talk about the work we do with companies, the work we do with workers. But this is an equally important aspect because we need efforts that can take the entire community and society with us as we embrace digitalization and the technological benefits it brings. This event today is an example of the government's efforts to work in close partnership with our community and corporate partners to build a digitally inclusive society. Many of these partnerships are targeted at seniors, especially those who are in the low income category, to make sure that they are not left out. The digital access package is one example. This is a year long pilot program that provides digital access to 200 low income seniors in Radin Mas and McPherson by providing a smartphone and a prepaid plan to each senior. But perhaps even more important than the device itself is the fact that officers from my ministry working with volunteers reach out to teach these seniors basic digital literacy skills 
and through this process better understand and address their digital needs. The aim is to help our seniors build confidence to use the technology to their benefits. We also have a digitally ready seniors program organized by Facebook and Touch, conducted at Touch's senior centers in Angmokyo and Yishun. This program reaches out to over 200 seniors who are interested in using digital services such as transport apps and e-payment so that their lives are enhanced through the convenience of technology. One senior who has benefited from this program is Mr. Chu Po Ni, who is 71 years old this year. He picked up skills such as scanning QR codes and making e-payments using his smartphone, which he finds very useful. More importantly, Mr. Chu said the workshops have helped him gain confidence in using technology, and he wants to be a volunteer for subsequent runs so that he can support other seniors in their learning. And that's exactly the kind of multiplier effect we seek, to initiate and enthuse members of our community who in turn can then reach out to their fellow members in order to bring everyone along in this journey. I shared two examples of partners, Touch and Facebook, working closely with the government to help seniors get digitally ready. And we need many more such partnerships. And that is why we have launched the Digital Participation Pledge in June last year. The aim is to encourage organizations from private people in public sectors to play their part in helping Singaporeans acquire skills and adopt technology. So I'm very happy that to date more than 600 organizations have supported the pledge. And I'm also happy to share that the first ever Digital Participation Pledge Awards is now open for nomination. As you know, in Singapore, we encourage effort and we always want to recognize the contributions. And I think these awards will be a very good way of doing that. The awards are open to organizations who have pledged their support and, we presented in, and will be presented in November this year. And it's our way of recognizing organizations who have put in place initiatives to prepare their employees, stakeholders, and the community to be digitally ready. However, building a digitally ready society is not just about ensuring that technology is accessible to all. It is also about equipping people with the skills to use the technology in ways that will enrich their lives. So availability, access, but also the knowledge and skills to use it for benefit. And I'm glad that we are making significant strides in our efforts to support various vulnerable groups in participating meaningfully. I want to share how Grab and various agencies have come together, in this case to help Mr. Francis Tay, who happens to be physically disabled. After losing a leg to amputation in 2015, Mr. Tay wanted to become a Grab driver to earn a living, but he faced various challenges. And to help him, Grab worked with partners like LTA, SG Enable, Traffic Police, and Vicom to identify a suitable vehicle, get it retrofitted with the necessary technology, and expedite the approval processes so that Mr. Tay could drive safely and conveniently. As a result of these efforts, Mr. Tay has been driving with Grab since May this year. And I also understand that his passengers have been kind and encouraging in their interactions with him. And his story, Mr. Stan's story and his journey, is a very heartening one. And it should inspire many of us, all of us, to emulate so that every Singaporean, regardless of what their background is, but in particular those who are vulnerable, can reap the benefits of a digital future. And I think his example, Mr. Tay's journey, and that of many others like him, should inspire us to embark on this effort in a concerted manner. Another case in point is the pilot of the Basic Digital Skills Workshop earlier this year at four special needs schools. The workshop covers topics such as e-payment and staying safe online to help students with special needs. Some of the students learned how to create email accounts and communicate with their friends using emails, while others learned about SingPass accounts at the workshop and how to make use of it to access government services. 
Overall, the workshop has helped the students by teaching them practical tips on the use of technology. And owing to its popularity, these four schools will be incorporating basic digital skills into their curriculum by 2020. And this is expected to benefit close to 700 students with special needs. IMDA has also worked with APSN, the Association for Persons with Special Needs, to come up with a cyber wellness adventure virtual reality game where students learn about setting strong passwords, identifying fake news, and cyberbullying in a fun-filled way. Teachers, students, and IMDA worked together to ensure that the game was appealing and effective. Through this collaboration, we were able to engage the students better and help them enjoy the benefits provided by digital technology. And besides students, we are also doing more to support our seniors. And I'm happy to announce that IMDA will be appointing the next group of 36 Info, Silver Infocom Wellness Ambassadors later today. A group of seniors who serve as role models and have stepped up to help their fellow seniors embrace digital services. This group of seniors will be actively involved in the Basic Digital Skills Workshop, originally piloted in West Coast, no prizes for guessing why, <laughs> but will be progressively expanded to more seniors in Teggi later this year. With support and encouragement from their peers, we hope more seniors will gain confidence and be comfortable in using technology. In short, what we need is the entire community to come together to build an inclusive digital society. What I've tried to do is share some stories of how technology has been changing lives. And these stories should inspire us all, and technology can help to create new ways for us to innovate, and drive social change. And in that regard, IMDA is collaborating with Creatives at Work on a new initiative called Stories, which will support independent content creators to create online videos under the theme of framing a better home. Content creators can submit their story ideas based on their chosen course because it pertains to the community, elderly, environment, family, underprivileged, or youth. Beyond storytelling, this initiative hopes to create opportunities for people to listen to one another and to have meaningful conversations on issues that are close to their hearts. So to sum up, digitalization has had a profound effect and will continue to have a profound effect on our lives, offering many opportunities, but it's also key that we do not leave anyone behind in this digital transition. Much of the conversation and emphasis in this effort revolves around the economy, what we are doing with enterprises, what we are doing with workers. But it's key that we are able to bring the entire Singapore society with us in this journey. Because what we want is an inclusive approach, one where no citizen is left behind and every one of them is able to benefit from the key value proposition that digital technologies offer us. Many partners from both the public and private sectors have come together to make this festival possible. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your support and for working with IMDA on this socially very important effort. I'm also glad that this Digital Inclusion Festival will be an annual event and look forward to welcoming many more partners to join us as we work together and do more to help everyone on this journey of digital inclusion. And I hope all of you will enjoy this three-day festival and take full advantage of all that it offers, including IMDA's Enable IT Forum tomorrow morning, where more will be shared on adopting Infocom and assistive technology. I want to thank all of you for your contributions and your efforts to this very important national effort in this transition that we're going through. And we look forward to working closely with you and many others as we persevere in this effort and achieve all the goals that we've set for ourselves. Thank you very much for inviting me. <clears throat>